Welcome back to another episode of Plant Propagation 101, where we are getting into the finer points and some of the macro points of plant propagation. So in this episode, I really want to dive into the... Thank you, Henry. I really want to dive into the topic of how to overwinter your rooted cuttings. I get this question a lot, especially this time of year. But first, before we go any further, I want you to hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more of these fantastic videos, and hit that bell notification to get updates. Check out the website below for more information. All right, are you guys ready? Here we go. All right, so the biggest question I get this time of year is, how do I overwinter these rooted cuttings? I've spent all summer rooting these cuttings or even rooted some just recently in the late summer. And now I'm getting nervous because the weather's getting colder and I don't know what to do the, with these things. I wanna make sure they get all the way to the spring in great condition. Before we go any further, I do wanna just put your mind at ease right now. There's one specific video that I did several years ago in which I did a little test just to prove that these rooted cuttings are as hardy as the parent plant. And if you guys are interested, which I think you are, go check it out. I'll put a link down below. In fact, I've got an entire playlist of videos that will show you different methods to overwinter your rooted cuttings. And I think you guys will be interested in that. Those of you who are really nervous about this, there's a whole bunch of information on there. Go check out that playlist down below. And if you hang out here a little longer, I'm gonna give you guys one very simple and easy trick that you can do to increase your success with overwintering these rooted cuttings. Trust me, it's really simple. So the video I did a few years was of me doing some cuttings earlier on in the summer. I got them rooted. They were just small little cuttings in a propagation frame. And I decided I'm just gonna prove that these are as hardy as the parent plant. So I stuck the frame out next to my hoop house, actually, few feet away from the hoop house. It wasn't protected by anything. It had open sky above. Wind could come through all of it. It rained on them. It snowed on them. It, there was lots of wind. They went all the way through the winter. And in the spring, those cuttings started growing again. So here's the one caveat. You want to make sure that the parent plants are cold hardy to your area. If you're trying to take cuttings of like a more tender variety of plant, like a hibiscus, then you're probably not going to get that cutting to survive outdoors in your area if it gets extremely cold and you get a lot of snow and ice through the winter. You want to make sure that the parent plants are cold hardy to your area. They are meant for your zone. The rooted cuttings are just as hardy as those parent plants. There are a few things to pay attention to and a few things we can do to help protect them. But in general, the rooted cuttings are just as cold hardy as the parent plants. So some considerations that you want to think about. One, in the winter time, it gets windy and it's cold wind. And those cold winds are what dry up and just can suck the life out of your rooted cuttings. They can hurt, you know, the parent plant, but the rooted cuttings are a little bit more fragile in that respect because they're so small. They don't have a lot in reserve. They don't have like big, thick, woody stems on which to, you know, protect them. And so you might want to give a little added protection from winds. And that's why I tell people, put your rooted cuttings on a back porch under a covered awning and maybe put up some kind of a wall or a makeshift thing or put them in a tote with the lid cracked so that those harsh winds can't come through and just suck the life out of your cuttings. Another consideration, you want to keep them moist but not wet. You're not watering your cuttings all winter long. You're just making sure the soil's moist. And I've done videos on this in the past. If I can find them, I'll put links to them. But I only water these plants in this hoop house usually twice through the whole winter, if that. If the soil is moist, I leave them alone. Too much water can just waterlog them. They're not actively growing. They're not taking up moisture and they're not expelling a lot of moisture. And so if you just continually water them all winter long, it's just going to waterlog those roots and they're not going to like it. And some of them might die from rot. Heavy snow loads can be a problem. Now, when I did that experiment out here, the snow in our area generally only gets a few inches a couple times a year. That's it. And then it goes away. Some years lately, we've been getting six inches, sometimes even 12 inches, which is uncharacteristic for our area. However, that year I did the experiment. It was only a few inches deep. 
it completely covered the cuttings, but if you're in an area that gets three feet of snow or five feet of snow, it might be too much weight and you might just kill those cuttings. So you wanna protect them from heavy snow loads. So you'll put them under a back porch or you know something where there's a covering so that that snow isn't just weighing down on those cuttings. That will also help prevent rainwater from saturating those little cutting soil so that it's not oversaturated. Just like you don't wanna overwater these, you don't want too much rain overwatering the cuttings. Now, if you've checked out the playlist down below and you've looked at all those videos and you said, you know, I just want something simple and easy that works almost every time or every time is what we really want, then I've got something really cool for you. It's really simple, it's really easy, and it will add a lot of protection to your rooted cuttings through the winter. And that is this. Just put your rooted cuttings in an unheated garage or a shed. That's enough protection. You don't wanna heat it, let it freeze in there, this is not protected. Both ends are open all winter long. These plants and pots freeze hard as a rock through the winter. All my cuttings in here freeze hard as a rock through the winter. It's not a problem at all. Just put them in an unheated building, unheated structure. It doesn't even matter. A shed will do fine. It doesn't need any lighting. They go dormant through the winter and they don't need light until the spring when those buds start swelling and they want to start growing again. You definitely need to get them back outside when that starts happening because you don't want long spindly growth that's pale because it doesn't get any light. But through the winter, you don't need any light. You don't need any extra protection. Just throw them in a shed, an old shed. It doesn't matter. It will provide enough protection from the wind, the snow, and the rain, and a little bit of frost protection in regards that when it will freeze in there, but when the, the heavy, hard frost hit really quickly, it provides a barrier and kind of a, a layer of insulation so that that frost happens a little more slowly on the inside of that building. And that's enough to protect your rooted cuttings. And that's another very important point that I just thought of. So many people come on here and say, but Mike, you have a greenhouse. That's why you're overwintering these cuttings. No. This is not a greenhouse, and I've said this in other videos, this is a hoop house or a cold frame structure. Both ends are open all winter long. Everything freezes hard as a rock. There is nothing different in here than there is outside, except there's a little bit of a barrier to slow down the frost. The other reason I have this structure, and a lot of people ask me this, why do you even use this thing? It's because I mostly grow rhododendrons and this white shade cloth, or it's plastic, but they call it shade cloth. It, it provides about 50% shade for these plants. Now, I found over the years that it's perfect for just about any small nursery plant because it provides a shady environment. But that's basically what I bought it for. And I found over the years that it's been really helpful for wind protection and I can regulate how much water these pots get through the winter. So that's it. I hope that helps you guys. And I would strongly encourage you to go click on that playlist down below. Check out all those videos. I've got lots of thoughts and ideas and things that you can do to help protect your rooted cuttings. And you know, not everybody's in the same location. Not everybody has access to a shed or a garage. There's a lot of different ideas that you can do in there. I think you'll really like them. Go check those out. So if you guys like this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe if you want to follow along and see more fantastic gardening videos. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios. Wait, don't go anywhere. We need an update. And I've got just the update for you guys, although we're going to talk about three different plants that we've propagated in the past and how they're doing because it's that time of year right now and things are happening and you just got to film the things when they're happening. So here we go. The first one is this rose right here. And I know I updated you guys on this already, but I gotta do it again because it's in full bloom. This is Galena's Rose. And I did a video on this last summer. I think I posted it last summer. Anyway, this is finally starting to bloom and it is absolutely gorgeous. It had a little bloom in that last update, but they're really putting on blooms now. It is turning out to be very fragrant and I am really excited. I got three of these plants to root and they are just looking fabulous. Definitely gonna keep these out on the property. The next update is gonna be these lavender because 
we did a video on this and I'll put a link to that one in the description where we actually rooted the cuttings of these lavender and then potted them up the following year. I think I had a couple videos on that. They're still doing good. I really need to prune them back now. They've got all kinds of these old spindles where flowers were in the past, but the growth is coming up real nice and strong. If I prune these back real good this winter, up pot them to two gallon pots and put them outside in full sun, they'll bush out even more and be ready for the landscape. The next update, some of you have been asking, how are the burning bush doing? And Glenda, I know I actually sent you one of these to Florida from here and you keep sending me pictures and showing me that it is doing fantastic. I hope it grows well for you. Now, it's still summer, so obviously the leaves are green. We did a video on rooting all of these burning bush cuttings. They're in one gallon pots. They're getting real stout, strong stalks on them. Nice, good growth, beautiful buds. Come fall, these will start turning a brilliant red. In fact, maybe I'll do an update on this one on another video when all of these turn red. I love burning bush. They just, they, they look absolutely beautiful in the fall time. So there they are, full disclosure, those plants that we did cuttings on several years ago are still growing strong and healthy and are finally getting to the point where they're strong and healthy and you can put them out on the landscape and not even worry about them. And that's the beauty of doing things this way. All right, guys, that's really it for now. Have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios again.